How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Of course, this is the channel, my channel, the only channel, because I don't have any other channels. And today I'm glad that you clicked on this video because if you're new to film, this might be the most important video that you watch today. One could even say it's taken a year to make because it has taken a year. Now, how I want this video to flow is I've gone through all of the archives and I've collected a bunch of numbers of how much I've shot and how much it's cost, as well as how much it costs to get into home developing. What I want to do is compare that to how much it would have cost if I didn't develop my own film at home and I had sent it to a lab. But before we get into the comparison, we do need to look at my year and the results. One second, I need to grab my numbers. I typed up this powerful spreadsheet and it took me way too long. Okay, so according to the all powerful spreadsheet here, I shot a total of 159 rolls of film in 2020. Some real quick disclaimers. 2020 is not over and I intend to shoot a few more rolls throughout the year. And finally, I'm not a financial advisor, so I can't advise you on anything, but I did just wanna share with you the results from my year. So of the 159 rolls of film that I shot, 21 of those were black and white and 138 of them were color. Now, if I was to split that up into format rather than black and white versus color, the 159 rolls would be split into 91 rolls, which were shot on 35 millimeter film and 68 rolls that were shot on 120. Unfortunately, I think I may have missed a roll or two here or there, so this is not finite stuff, but it is probably at least 95% accurate. So the total cost for purchasing those 91 35 millimeter rolls equals around $662.10. Now, if we were to compare the $662 spent on 91 rolls of 35 millimeter, and we look at the 68 rolls that was shot on 120, those 68 rolls cost $553.64. If we were to take those two prices and combine them together back to the original 159 rolls, the total cost of film for me in 2020 was $1,215.74. Okay, so now that we've gone through how much money it even cost to obtain the film, we need to look at the two options going forward. And for me, this is the big one that has helped me continue shooting film because I've opted to develop my own film at home rather than sending it to a lab. So I've put together and calculated the bare essentials that you would need to start developing your own film at home. And that list is going to first, of course, start off with chemicals. Now you can get chemicals from multiple places. Uh, not everyone is willing to ship those chemicals to you and not, not everyone is legally able to ship those chemicals to you. So the one that I do suggest and the one that I've used the most is the Cine Still chemicals. Of course, you are going to have to break it up by film type. C41 is one type of chemical, E6 is one type of chemical, and black and white is one type of chemical. So if you shoot a lot of black and white and rarely shoot color, maybe it's an option for you to start just developing your black and white photos and sending the color ones to the lab. That way you're not spending money on chemicals that are eventually gonna go bad if you don't use them enough. Now, the next thing on the list that you're going to need is a developing tank. The three big main brands right now out there are the Patterson tank, the Jobo tank, and the Lab Box. Now, cruising through the remaining items of essentials, you're going to need some chemical bottles to store the chemicals in. You're gonna need a thermometer, and you're going to need some sort of measuring cup. And that's really all you need to start developing your own photos. So if that is something that you are looking into and considering for 2021, I did leave links down in the description to the supplies that I've purchased and would recommend. But please don't think that that's it because developing is one half, we still have to scan the photos. And to do that, you're either going to need a light table and a DSLR or a scanner. I did choose the scanner option up front. So if we were to look at my expenses for 2020 on the costs to scan and develop my own film, it would end up being around $440. And that does not count time because I feel like time is 
one of the biggest factors in deciding do you develop at home or do you send it to a lab? Let's compare how much it cost me to start developing and to continue purchasing chemicals to develop versus how much it would have cost me to send all of my rolls of film to a lab. So like I said, 2020 was the first year that I've started taking film photography seriously. So I did have the upfront cost of buying the tank, the scanner, the chemicals, the thermometer, I had to make the initial investments, but at the end of the day, that did cost under $200 just to make the investment. The rest of the money goes to chemicals. So in 2020, I spent $440.92 to set up my developing system, as well as develop all 159 rolls of film. So at that point, we would be able to add $440.92 to the 1,215 dollars and 74 cents that it cost to purchase the film, and we can determine how much money I spent shooting film in 2020. So now moving over to the lab cost, I will say upfront, this isn't 100% accurate because there's no way to be 100% accurate. There are so many factors, it's, it's impossible for me to make an all-encompassing video. My favorite and go-to lab is the Find Lab. That is a Utah-based lab. They do sell film as well as develop and you can ship to them from anywhere. So these numbers I took from the Find Lab as of the beginning of December for their basic development and scanning. So if we went back to my original numbers, we plugged those numbers into the Find Lab, it would have ended up costing around $1,812, which is almost twice as much as it cost to even purchase the film. Now format does change prices, so I've broken that up as well to show the comparison. If I only got my 35 millimeter film developed, it would have been $1,092, which is 91 rolls. Versus my 120, I shot 68 rolls, and that would have cost $720 to be scanned and developed. That's a lot of money that I just don't have. I ended up saving $1,371.08 by developing my film at home. Now, like I've said throughout the video, that doesn't include time, and there is a ton of time that has to go into home developing. You have to learn, you have to practice. You're not gonna be good at first, so you may even mess up your first few rolls. And one single roll can take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to develop and then two hours to dry. Not that you have to sit there and watch it dry, but the whole process could take up to three hours. And if you multiply that by the 159 rolls, it adds up quick. But in hopes of not making this feel like it is impossible to shoot film in 2021, I'm going to wrap up here with just a few suggestions on overall how to save a little bit more money. So my first suggestion for you is going to be shop around when purchasing film. Like I said, a lot of times you can come across great deals on eBay or Facebook, or even just by talking to people about shooting film. Personally, just by even going out and shooting film with a unique looking camera and talking to people about it, I've had people tell me that they just have rolls of film sitting at their house that they didn't know what to do with because they don't shoot film anymore and they've given them to me. That's free film. My second suggestion is this video. Decide for yourself, is home development a smart option for me? Am I going to be going through enough film that I can justify purchasing the chemicals? One batch of the Cine Still chemicals can develop anywhere from 15 to 20 rolls, depending on how you use it. My third suggestion might get quite a bit of hate, but be a hybrid shooter. There's nothing wrong with shooting digital and film. Personally, for me, some projects scream film and I really want that vibe, but I'm totally fine with shooting digital. And for a lot of my 
actual professional photography work, I do shoot digital. So if you're okay with that, look at it project by project. Do I need to shoot film or would this picture look just as good digitally? Another suggestion would be to look into maybe buying bulk rolls. Some film stocks you can purchase in 100 to 500 feet rolls of film that you can then package into individual 35 millimeter canisters and end up saving quite a bit of money that way. And my final suggestion is a little bit different. It's the suggestion to just share. You know, shoot a lot of film, share your results, be vocal about it. Let people know that you're shooting film again. And like I said, some people may give you film. Yes, it does sometimes encourage companies like <coughs> Kodak to increase their prices. But I do believe the more people shooting film, the better. This film community that has been created in the recent years is awesome and so supportive. And the bigger that community grows, the more we show the world that film is coming back and that it never died. And smaller companies are being created and stepping up and contributing so much cool stuff. And the more we can support those people, the better we'll be. So I hope this was helpful to you somehow, some way. A lot of time and effort went into this video because I felt like it was very important and I hope it will help you guys out there. So like I said, down in the description, there are links to everything that I've mentioned if you would like some help getting started. As well, if you follow me on Instagram, my inbox is always open. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I try to respond to all of those. And that will do it for us today. So thank you for joining me today on my film journey. And until next week, I'll see you later.